morning. Good morning and welcome to worship. Am I on? Hello? Yes, yes I am. Sorry, that was me. Um, third time, third time's the charm. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship. Those of you here in the sanctuary, those who are joining us via Armstrong Cable, and those who are joining us on Facebook, a special a welcome to those of you who come back through Facebook. Uh, last week, we realized that for the first 10 minutes on Facebook, there was no sound. So if you have returned, thank you for your persistence. Um, for those who stayed, I heard that there was some confusion because last week we had a change in our order of worship in which we will have this morning as well. A little bit of a change in terms of, uh, of course, our, our welcome and good morning, our call to worship, our opening hymn, and then we will uh, go right into our scripture and uh, pursuing of the word of God in our terms of our attention to the story for this day. So announcements and prayers at the end of the service. And just a reminder, as always, we welcome you here in the sanctuary and those wherever you are. To, um, we're glad you're here and that you, whoever you are and wherever you are and however you are, we come intentionally now into the presence of God. This day, our gospel lesson will invite us to consider the parable of the lost sheep. Scripture talks much about shepherds, sheep, guidance, and goodness. So as our call to worship this morning, I invite us again to intentionally find ourselves, place ourselves in the presence of the good shepherd. As I share with you, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our opening hymn that Jim will play for us and this morning is entitled, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. The king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness never faileth. Never I have nothing to lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. And where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. week, if you were with us, you might remember I completely forgot the children's sermon until later in the service. So this week I decided we'd do this quite early, um, knowing that some of our smaller people at home may not be able to stay with us the whole time. But this morning, as we consider green pastures, still waters, sheep and shepherds, I uh, remembered this book on my bookshelf, All Things Bright and Beautiful. It comes uh, the words are, are come from another hymn that we often sing when we celebrate creation of all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. So I want to share this. It's beautiful pictures. And by the way, a shout out to our local bookstore, Tattered Corners, because um, this is where I, I purchased this book. So you might uh, find yourselves singing along or humming along with these words. It's about a little girl. Uh, the pictures, a little girl uh, out in her farm. All things bright and beautiful, 
all creatures, great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, He made their glowing colors. He made their tiny wings. The purple-headed mountains, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky, the cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them, every one. The tall trees by the greenwood, the meadows where we play, the rushes by the water we gather every day. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. And then the words to that lovely hymn. Ah, the God who made things great and small. Who gave us a world of wonder and of great concern, right? This morning, our scripture talks about a shepherd and about a sheep. Last week, we heard a story of Jesus, a parable. came from just a few chapters before what we are hearing this morning. And in that parable, Jesus led in by saying, suppose one of you, suppose one of you. This morning, our story begins in a similar way. Luke 15 verses 1 and 2 go like this now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them Jesus then told them a parable which goes like this which one of you which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he's found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, early on this day, we turn to you for instruction, for guidance, for comfort, for correction. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our heads to know you and your word for us this morning. Amen. And so Jesus starts this parable with these words. Which one of you, which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness to go after the one that is lost until he finds it? The answer would have been from those gathered around him and from us, None of us, Jesus, because that's the dumbest thing we have ever heard. That is the dumbest thing. You are out of your mind, Jesus. If you think we would leave 99 sheep in the wilderness to go after that one darn dumb sheep who wandered off. Now, what's really important in this uh, description is the wilderness. Jesus says, you know, in framing this parable, you're not leaving them in a pen or a barn, nor protected or contained by a fence. You are leaving the 99 out in the wilderness where that entire flock 
that entire flock could be destroyed by a wild beast. Which one of you, which one of you would jeopardize the well-being of 99 for one? Again, none of us, Jesus, but, but go ahead, because we really want to hear where this story is going. Okay, so Jesus goes on. So um, the shepherd goes and finds the sheep. There's a lot of, uh, I was looking at this online, a lot of paintings and portraits. Of, I'm just describing this particular moment. Um, and then the shepherd puts the sheep over his shoulder and brings him home. Okay, so we're like, okay, well, that part makes sense. But then again, Jesus goes off the common sense track and says, and then the shepherd arrives home with this one sheep around his shoulders, and he calls together his neighbors and says, we're going to have a celebration because that one sheep, that one sheep that was lost has been found and has been brought home. Now, everyone, all of your neighbors, Know that you are crazy because no one gathers people together to celebrate the return of one sheep. Because, again, what has happened to the 99? How many of them, how many of them got back? See, I want us to consider, before we go to the end of this uh, parable this morning, I want us to consider how this parable would have first been heard, this story, to help us uh, strip away or at least chip away at the veneer of niceness, of goodness that we place over so much of Scripture, so many of Jesus' teaching, we, um, we kind of water it down. But this is quite an alarming text. Jesus' listeners were a mix of folks. We're told there were tax collectors and sinners there. Uh, this was who Jesus had been talking with. But there also had been others who were obviously listening, scribes and Pharisees. So these uh, four groups, tax collectors, for a number of reasons, get a really bad rap in the Gospels, um, in part because they were Jews working for the Roman government. So many considered them traitors. Also, the reputation was that they were cheats. We don't know if this is, you know, we're, we can't say, but we know that this is how it has been uh, translated to us down these centuries. And then there were sinners. Now, sinners are a huge group of people. They were considered, at least by the Pharisees, to be Jews who did not follow the religious law. It could have been by choice. It could have been by their occupation. It could have been by their physical condition. But whatever, they were considered outside of this uh, inner circle of goodness and righteousness. Then there were Pharisees, part of a, one of the uh, sects of Judaism. They were set apart, and I so often group all of these people together, scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, but they were quite distinct. Um, the Pharisees followed not only the written law, the Torah, but they had an oral tradition and laws that they expected others to follow. And then there were the scribes, who kind of what we think that word would mean, learned men, their work was to study the law, to um, translate it, and to um, make commentary on it. So, of course, it is those last two groups, the Pharisees and the scribes. They're the ones that had the issue with Jesus eating with sin, sinners and tax collectors. That, Last two groups, and we've talked about this quite often in my uh, time here at Stone. Those last two groups were most likely the good church people. Um, me. Clergy leaders. Um, they weren't bad people, and that's hard for us to get our heads around sometime, because as we have read the Gospels and understand Jesus' relationship, we quickly go to, oh... Oh, those scribes, those Pharisees. But they were the religious authorities. They were the ones who defined who was in and who was out, who was lost and who was found. 
And I suspect that all of them, the scribes, the Pharisees, the tax collectors, the sinners, they all knew. They all knew because they had been well taught who is worthy to go after, who is deserving of being sought out, and who is not. And the chasm between these two groups, the ins and the outs, was wide and deep. And so Jesus tells them that parable that ends with these words that you heard, just so I tell you. And I can just envision, you know, this is always, in my mind, I try to envision tone of voice. And I love thinking that at this point, Jesus is like, leans in and is real animated, like, wait, do you hear this? This is such great news. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Isn't that good news? And their faces, at least some of them, would have dropped. I imagine like storytelling in our day, some would get it right away. Who was who in the story and others not until later when they had the aha moment. See, on first read though, on our hearing, and maybe on their hearing, it appears that it is the tax collectors and the sinners who are the lost sheep in this story. And the scribes and the Pharisees are the 99. But wait, Jesus never actually says that. Jesus never identifies who's lost or who, found, who is found. Maybe what Jesus is saying here and I think this is true, is that the truth is that God is willing to seek out anyone and everyone who is lost for whatever reason. That the scribes and the Pharisees were also lost. They were lost because they were so sure that they were the found ones that they were the good ones, that they were the inside of the kingdom ones. And Jesus' story here opens it up for all of them and for all of us. This understanding that God's love is courageous and persistent and, yes, even foolish at times. That God's love goes after everyone that God never gives up on anyone. If you go away with anything from this morning, from our time together, I want you to hold on to that. God never gives up on anyone. And that the celebration in heaven when one comes home is vast and great and joyous. This is what I believe is the word of God for the people of God this morning. However lost you are, God will seek you out. If you're lost in grief, God is searching for you. If you're lost in anxiety or depression, God is seeking for you. If you're lost in addiction, God is seeking for you. He is searching for you. If you're lost in a broken relationship, God is searching for you. If you're lost in self-righteousness, God is searching for you. If you're lost in confusion, God is searching for you. If you're lost because you think you aren't, because you're sure that you've got it all together, at least for today, God is searching for you. All of us, each of us, are at some time that lost sheep. That Jesus was willing to lay down his life for. That's crazy. Go out for that lost sheep. And each of us, if we see ourselves as the lost sheep, then I think there's an opening for us to understand that every other person in God's eyes is that lost sheep who God is willing to seek. Now, if you're, if you're like me, and you know, I always hope you are, 
If you're like me, you might get a little judgy on some days, a little little self-righteous about who's deserving and who's not deserving and who's in and out and who's good and not as good. Um, We know that the divide in our nation these days is deep and wide. Deep and wide. Um, We know that we are divided by the signs in our yards and by our posts on Facebook and by countless other things. We gather around Jesus this morning to listen to this parable, which is kind of ridiculous and crazy. That's what I think Jesus uh, wanted us to know, wanted his his early um, listeners to know, that God's love isn't like ours, that God's grace isn't like ours, that the division that God sees is not like ours, that every person on every side of every equation is worthy. All tax collectors and sinners, all scribes and all Pharisees are worthy and beloved. Each of us, that lost sheep that God is going after by his grace. So Jesus, the shepherd, seeks us. He celebrates us when we return, when he carries us home. And so this morning... This morning, we celebrate that God's love is not like our love. It is much wider, much deeper, much faster. This morning, we celebrate God's reckless love. you 
you, Jen. The reckless love of God that, uh, that is, we give thanks. I was thinking as I was sitting there, listening to that about God, about uh, the reckless love of God, and maybe some of you can uh, relate to this. If you've ever been like me, you're like the sheep that got stuck and lost, and uh, when God and Christ has come for you, you're like, no, really, I'm fine. <laughs> you're all caught up in a fell down between rocks or all caught on some thistles. Um, some of us are h- harder to reach than others. So I thank, I'm so thankful that God still reaches out. So this morning, as we go to joys and concerns, a number of uh, thanksgivings for this day. I want to continue, and I have not uh, done this in such an official way before, to, to bless the offering that is brought forth each week. So, God, we are most grateful for your giving um, of all of you and what it enables us to do. And so a thank you to everyone who continues to give financially to the work of this church. Um, The blessing of the Ride for the Refuge and the um, great contribution that you all have made and those who who've given who live uh, far away as Florida and Maine and uh, California. We've had some wonderful sharing um, of this ministry and we've shot and to the top of the leaderboard, by the way. Um, uh, joys of birthdays. Last week we celebrated Tyson's birthday, but did not have the flowers because they were not delivered. So the flowers on the altar this morning uh, celebrate uh, Tyson's uh, birthday. So we have much to celebrate, and we have um, many concerns and grief this morning. So this morning, I ask you, uh, gathered in afar, to uh, lift up Donna Mullen at the this time, um, the death of her son David this last week. So uh, prayers for Donna and that extended family. Also yesterday, I received a call that our uh, dear member, Mary Patterson, passed away. And so we uh, pray for Mary and as Mary's family. And as I shared uh, with a few people yesterday, I am most grateful for the care that was offered to Mary uh, by Gerald uh, Stockton and Jeff Lautzenheiser and Jim Schlosser and Patty Brown out of the office and Mary Lee Sackle when she was here. Our only contact with Mary over these last few years has been through the senior food box uh, delivery. That has been our main way of connecting with Mary. And um, the gracious uh, way that Mary was always uh, treated and welcomed by the church, uh, being mostly those people. is It was a gift to me and to her. So um, pray for Mary's family in these days. We continue, of course, to pray for uh, firefighters out west and for all those in dangerous way, uh, all of God's creation, those whose lives have been damaged, destroyed by the hurricane, so we are. Um, we pray for those. We pray for our nation. We've been asked on our. We now have a church app, Tidely, and you can get that on your phone. It has a prayer wall um, where you can post prayers that you would like us to lift up. So there, uh, we have been asked to pray for a friend in hospice care, for our schools, for unbelievers, for challenges. Um, for those dealing with chronic illness or pain, for persons experiencing strains in relationship. And this morning, I would also lift up on behalf of us and our nation, uh, thanksgiving for the work and witness of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, What what can you say? 87 years. Um, A force to be reckoned with for... uh, for justice and for wisdom in the courts. So um, we thank God, and I I pray she left us some of her power. Um, So let's go to prayer. Hmm. Oh God, you hear us. You know us. You seek us out. You know us this day, whether we have heard ourselves this morning in the scripture as scribes or Pharisees, and we, we offer ourselves up if that's where we are now in our lives, 
And oh God, we offer ourselves up if we find ourselves this day as tax collectors and sinners, those who have wandered off. Oh God, thank you for hearing us, for knowing us, for loving us, for seeking us just as we are. In this moment, we offer up the joys that we have expressed in words, and now the joys of our hearts. We say, thank you, O oh Lord. For the concerns we have lifted up, O oh Lord, for persons in grief, for place, people in places of danger, We lift these persons up, O oh Lord. For all those in need of healing of body, mind, spirit, relationship, people we know, and people in places hidden from our eyes but not from yours, we lift them up, O oh Lord. God, forgive us for turning away from the one in need. Forgive us for our quick judgment about who is deserving and not deserving, who is in and who is out. Forgive us. Give us the courage and compassion of Jesus. All of this we pray. All of this we pray. In the name of the one who came to show us the way to live in this world, that we might come in joy <laughs> to the world that is next. And so we pray now the prayer that Jesus first taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so before we go forth, just a few announcements. Um, this evening, we uh, meet in our annual meeting with our district superintendent. The meeting is called Charge Conference. Uh, we will be gathering in a hybrid way. Uh, that those of us who uh, prefer will be gathered in Miller Parlor. Those who prefer to join us on Zoom are able to join us on Zoom. Uh, Tyson Johnston is going to give me a little instruction, and you can guarantee it's going to be more than a little because I am a slow learner, um, in, in Miller Parlor and how to do these meetings so that during the course of this year, we will have the opportunity to um, stay in touch with persons and to keep our um, sort of the administrative and ministerial guidance work of the church going in a, in, um, a number of, of new ways. And so if you're here and you want to learn a little bit more about it, you can join me in uh, Miller Parlor following the service. Again, thanks to everyone who has supported the Ride for the Refuge. We are looking into October. We're going to be supporting our United Methodist Committee on Relief health kits and uh, flood buckets or cleaning buckets um, that will go directly to those who are currently being affected. So uh, we look forward to that as our next outreach project in the life of the church. Our uh, children and youth received their first mailing on our uh, year initiative of the stories about who Jesus ate with. If you uh, know of a little person in your life who didn't get it, who might like to, please let me know. Uh, we can still get that out. And again, on all things, go to our website and you can get more information or stay in touch. So with that, 
Uh, we are thankful this morning that we've been able to be together, that our lives have been claimed again by the love, reckless love of God. I'd invite you to stand, um, to listen to, and also uh, sing in your hearts and your heads, um, Great is thy faithfulness, which Jim is going to play for us. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There's no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. If you would stand. If able. So go forth now in the name and the power and the peace and the presence and the courage of the good shepherd who will seek you and find you and bring you home. Go forth to share that good news. Amen. Mm -hmm.